Hi, everyone. This is Modern Marketers by Think with Google. I'm Joshua Spania, VP of Media Lab within Google Marketing. I lead teams around the world who plan, invent, execute, and measure marketing programs on behalf of Google's brands. Each episode, I talk to game-changing marketers and founders who are delivering modern marketing today. I'm here with Elizabeth Campbell, Vice President of Field and Culture Marketing at McDonald's. Also joining me today as co-host is my colleague and global senior marketing director at Google, Bethany Poole. Let's dive right in. Hey, Elizabeth. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Hey, Bethany. Hello. So am I allowed to say already I'm loving it, just being here with you, Elizabeth? <laughs> Of course you can. You could have caught me the other day when I was singing um, with a giant guitar that we posted on social media, singing ba da ba ba ba. Ooh. <laughs> Elizabeth, Vice President of Marketing at McDonald's, just tell us a little about you um, and your role. So I have the pleasure of leading about 40 individuals on our marketing team who are accountable for what we call our field office marketing plans. So there are about 10 field offices across the United States and the U.S. Those individuals each manage about $4 billion to $6 billion, and they basically are the ones who have to develop the go-to-market plans in terms of how we drive marketing at a local level. And, um, and I have the pleasure of working with them and leading them and guiding them and, um, and you know, enjoying you know, taking McDonald's forward. You've been at McDonald's a while, right? Exactly how long? A long time. I just hit my 20th anniversary at McDonald's in February, and I'm excited about it. Most people don't know, but after 10 years at McDonald's, you get a sabbatical. So technically, I'm eligible for my second sabbatical that I have not taken yet. Um, 20 years at McDonald's, that's a lot of Happy Meals. Yeah. And I, I, I will just say for the record now, I am completely biased and on your side. I love McDonald's. I have incredible memories of growing up in London and what McDonald's meant to me and my family. But it's uh, I'm super excited to have this conversation talk about the iconic golden arches. I also want to know, Elizabeth, do you get like golden arches or something to put on your like desk office? What do you what do they do to commemorate 20 years? After the first year, you get a pin that has a one on it, a gold one. I think you get another one after the fifth year. And after the 10th year, yes, I do have some arches that is in like a commemorative box and a certificate about achieving 20 years of service at McDonald's. That's awesome. The 10 years at Google, they, they send you a Google Doodle. So, you know, the Google Doodles on our homepage, you can choose a customized one that says, congratulations, 10 years, Josh, you're at Google. I don't know. I'm, I'm not yet made 20 years, so I don't know what happens at 20. Bethany, do you know? I got two more years to go, so... I'll tell you. I'll tell you at the twenty. Okay, <laughs> we should all go out for a, a, a Big Mac and fries to celebrate that. Exactly, and an apple pie because I like apple pie. So that's what you need. At work, what makes you nervous, if anything, at this point in your career? What makes me nervous at work, or what makes me nervous in general when it comes to marketing? Which one do you want to talk about? Why don't we do both? I mean, the okay. people who want, people who want to know. So I would say at work, what makes me nervous is about making sure that I am being true to what the consumer wants. And I like the fact that it makes me nervous because if I'm ever walking around saying that I know everything and that I have everything figured out, then we are in a dangerous situation. And I get nervous when I'm like, hey, I'm on the edge and just a little bit concerned about should I take the leap and take that risk? But then you still just take the leap. And you take the risk, and your nerves just kind of go out, out of you from there. But um, but that kind of makes me nervous a little bit at work. But it's not a bad thing in terms of where I'm walking on edge every day. It's more of um, a freeing feeling that I'm on the verge of something exciting. But the thing that makes me the most nervous is when I had to go into a high school class as a grown adult and talk to them about marketing. High school students can be unforgiving. And they don't care that you've worked in marketing for over 30 years. They're going to ask you every question under the sun. And what was nerve-wracking, because my niece um, is a principal, what was nerve-wracking about it is that you have to come at it with an authenticity and a genuine part of talking about the craft and not like when you're talking to the executives that you work with. So how do you have that real conversation with them? Because they're, that's the group that's going to call you out and say, yeah, I know you developed that commercial for Chicken McNuggets. It sucked. We didn't like it. And tell you why they didn't like it. Um, and so that makes you a little nervous when you're, when you're going in front of a, an audience that is so truthful in how they feel about your craft or your work. Great answer. That must have been a fun uh, high school students. My, my kids always ask me to come in and do stuff at their school. Well, not always, but, you know, but deeply scary place to go. Right. I, I tried to give them McDonald's gift cards. My niece was like, that's not going to work. I was like, okay. You can't buy them off. Exactly. Without the hard questions. <laughs> exactly. 
So I have done the dunk your fries and dunk your nuggets in a milkshake. And mm-hmm. it's surprisingly, like, actually delicious. I mean, it's, you know, it's a delicious milkshake and it's delic- delicious nuggets. So what do you think was going to happen? But, yeah, uh, it, it's pretty fascinating. And I came across that actually through a YouTube short about a year ago where someone was doing it. And I was like, i got to try that. And it yep. was fun. <laughs> Can you talk about a career highlight for you, a high moment beyond just the sort of when you made, got some big promotion, something where you really felt like this is a highlight for your career? There have been several moments that I've just been like enjoying as far uh, as part of my career. And one of them, it was actually on a personal trip. Um, I went to South Africa. I took my mom to South Africa. She's from, a, of course, a different generation. She didn't travel that much. I actually helped her get her, her first passport. And we were going to South Africa to go on a safari. And we stopped at a McDonald's. And when we walked into the McDonald's, I was like, this is my cup. And she was like, yeah, Liz, whatever. I know you work at McDonald's. Let's just get some coffee. I was like, no, no, no. You don't understand. (laughs) This is the cup that I designed, you know, in my current job. And she was like, what are you talking about? You work in the U.S., not in South Africa. But what had happened was that we were relaunching coffee. I had the accountability of developing the new coffee blend, developing the packaging that was associated with it. And they carried that U.S. design international. And I didn't realize it at the time. And so when I walked into that restaurant in South Africa and I saw the cup that I designed, it was a career moment for me in terms of understanding the impact that I had made across the McDonald's system. But then even more importantly, it was something that I could share with my mom. And so once I explained it to her, she was like, you know, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you baby. I'm proud of you, baby. But, um, but I think she understood exactly what I did at, at, within marketing for McDonald's. And it just it was sweet to share that moment with her. That is a lovely moment. And uh, yeah, great. Just a cup of joe. But wow, what a big cup of coffee. So, Elizabeth, you just talked about 18 years ago in this coffee cup, and you have had so many different roles at McDonald's. Can you tell us more about your start as a marketing manager and the path that you've been on over the last 20 years? From designing cups to, you know, field marketing and billion-dollar businesses around the U.S. Yep, definitely. So I came to McDonald's after working at Coca-Cola and Kraft Foods. And coming into McDonald's, it was totally different. I came in as someone who was leading a project. We were getting ready to launch into an espresso-based coffee, which is McCafe today. But in order for us to do that, we need someone who can help us clean up our base drip coffee so that we can earn the right to go into the next um, generation of coffee. And I was given that assignment. And it started off very challenging, but it was also exciting. I learned how to bob and weave because it wasn't as structured as working at Kraft or working at Coca-Cola. So I learned how to be more flexible. And I learned about how the consumer is truly at the center of everything we do. So my trajectory or path in going through um, coming into McDonald's started with that foundation and me just kind of going into it. And I spent the first four years working in new product development. It was more about influencing. It was more about defining our brand promise. And so these were moments that were changing the way that we thought about marketing and how we applied them. And then also like working on innovations such as all-day breakfast in terms of fans telling us, you guys should really have breakfast open later on the weekend for us. And, And being able to curate and work on that platform and lead it. And then I had the opportunity to go and work on myself as a leader. And this is where I was given the opportunity by some of my mentors at McDonald's to go to the New York market and actually lead a marketing team. I had to work in terms of transforming the talent that was in that market and really defining who are the consumers that we were going after in such a diverse market and how could we do it in a way that was meaningful for them, but also profitable for our franchisees in that market. And that's where I really got the hands-on experience as a leader in terms of how do you not only drive your, your the business objective forward, but how are you influencing different audiences who have different business objectives to carry this through? And then I came back from that, and my next leadership opportunity of developing me as a leader was to work on a, a project that was with Uber Eats. So you're thinking of a brand that's 50-plus years old, working with Uber Eats as a startup. So, you know, a, a startup versus us. But how do we transform the industry by making delivery available for within the fast food industry. 
and then carrying it through so that the crew within the restaurant knew how to execute it or the owner operators understood the financials of it as we were bringing a new set of consumers into their restaurants at a faster pace and making McDonald's more accessible to them. And then most recently, the role that I had right before this one was another change for me in terms of driving innovation. And that's where I had the opportunity to lead our cultural engagement team. And this was about how we look at social media. This is about how we look at brand relevance platforms within the industry. And then that led me to leading an even bigger body, as I mentioned, which is our field marketing team, who is really out there transforming how we have the one-on-one engagement with consumers um, down to the market or restaurant level. It's really about how I get more in tune with our audience and more in tune with our customer and more in tune with the people who work in the brand to understand how we bring things forward. So I just want to pick up on something you said a few minutes ago around your current role in sort of field marketing. You know, the name of this podcast is the Modern Marketers Podcast, and you talked about building one-to-one relationships and sort of personalization, but you know, at the, at the field level, the ground level, with with customers as individuals. What does modern marketing mean to you in in this context today versus where it was maybe five, ten years ago? Oh wow! So. When I first started, when I was 21, marketing, (laughs) people used to think that one-on-one marketing was FSIs or, um, you know, again, sending something straight to people's home and that way we know them and this is how we engage with them. And now, of course, it's no longer that. Um, Of course, it's about how do we make the connection with the consumer in a way that they want to be communicated with. So in a digital platform, um, whether it's on our phone whether it's the channels that we're utilizing to reach out to them to drive awareness about products that we have or remind them about products that are coming to the market, that's the way that I see that marketing has has evolved and engaged. I always tell people, we cannot force ourselves into the life of the consumer. They are inviting us in. So if they're opening the door to invite us in, how are we going to show up as neighbors? And are we going to show up in, I'm going to say, are we going to show up doing a billboard when they're saying, no, I don't want to talk to you on a billboard or out of home. I want you to talk to me on the most convenient way, which may be your, you know, your phone. And so we as good neighbors have to figure out how to do that. That is not intrusive, but it's still bringing them accessibility and and the content and information that they want in order to to enjoy McDonald's and create those memories. So McDonald's has had some remarkable successes in the social media space and just marketing overall in the last two or three years. And at some point, I want to go back and talk about I'm Loving It, the introduction of that, but that's that's a much older story, a very successful one. But I'd love to hear the inside story on uh, Grimace's birthday and uh, the milkshake craze and what your interpretation of that moment was and how it came about and how you put the fuel on the fire and, and made it into this sort of global phenomenon. Yep. So I am not going to take credit for that. Um, But what I will tell you, because I was actually transitioning from one role to another, Grimace's birthday actually came out of an idea that one of our agencies had, and it is Wyden and Kennedy. They were always putting us on the forefront in terms of hearing what our customers wanted and then how we could partner with the consumers or, or engage with them in a unique way. And there had come this moment in which some of our older McDonald's characters were starting to come to life more. I think um, it started within our adult Happy Meal that we had called Artist Residency that we did with Cactus Plant. So when that started to happen, people got really excited about those characters. And there was an opportunity for us to celebrate Grimace because everybody wanted to know what is Grimace, who is Grimace, what is, you know, what is going on? And so once we started seeing that pop up with consumers, it allowed us to enter the conversation in a more authentic way versus us telling the consumers, hey, Grimace is hip, Grimace is cool, you guys need to, to touch base with them. The customer actually started having fond memories of him that allowed us to go and celebrate him. And birthdays are synonymous. Everybody remembers having a birthday at McDonald's when they were a kid. So that was a great way for us to enter that conversation and to make it a natural part of the way McDonald's shows up. And I think the team did some remarkable things in terms of how they interacted in social. They did some remarkable things in terms of how they brought the experience to life in the restaurant, even including a birthday cake um, that you could get and different things of that nature. What's been amazing to me is that there was a group of individuals who actually worked on that from our brand and content team, but how Grimace has continued to grow and how it's continued to become part of where consumers are looking for Grimace to show up. I just want to ask... I know you can't reveal numbers, mm-hmm. 
But, you know, one of the criticisms of sort of social media things when they pop is, is like, what is the actual business impact? But as I understand it, the business impact of the, the, the Grimace birthday was significant and sustained, and you could actually measure that, correct? Yes, and I cannot reveal, you're absolutely right, can't reveal numbers, but we will always look at engagement. Like, that'll be the first thing we'll look at to see if, if customers are engaging us. But with the birthday, what was associated with it was coming in for a specific product. And so we were able to understand the impact that Grimace was making based upon if the consumer was coming in for that specific product, but then also if we saw more guest counts, consumers, fans, excuse me, coming in during that period of time and being curious about what McDonald's has to offer. And that's what we actually saw. We saw fans coming in in droves for the shake, but we also saw fans coming in because we reminded them of the excitement that they had about McDonald's. So it cascaded across multiple products that they loved and enjoyed to bring them in. And that's that's how we were able to measure the success of that. But then also we were able to me- measure the success because we saw our fans starting to talk about Grimace more on our behalf, which then drove curiosity from them to come into the restaurant again. As you uncover insights and in your current role now, sort of managing these sort of multiple billion dollar regional businesses, do you have a process for sort of doing little experiments for identifying some of these and testing them out versus top down, just launching something nationally. Yeah. You sit on an airplane and somebody asks you, where do you work? And you say, I work at McDonald's. And then they tell you all the things that you should be doing. And that's how you craft the the, the experiments. No. <laughs> um, but no but, feedback comes all the time. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, but seriously, in terms of how do we come up with some of these products? Is that what you were asking? I, well, I want to make sure I'm getting or, to the... Or how do you test it, right? How do I test? How do we test it? Some things don't need to be tested. That was an insight that was observed and shared. It was based upon a product that we had in the restaurant. There was really no testing needed. We may at some point in time test creative to understand how the, if the creative is resonating in the way that we would like for it to be tested. So there will be neural testing that we will do where we'll actually show customers finished creative. But some, when it comes to some of those products, they don't need to be tested. And that's why I think McDonald's is different now than when I started 20 years ago, is that when I worked in new product development, we would do focus groups. We would test everything. I remember when we were looking at how many slices of cheese that would go on a sandwich. And it was like, is it one slice of cheese? Is it two slices of cheese? When you bite into it, you know, do you get a full bite? All of that. Now, we don't have to do that. Because A, our customers are giving us immediate feedback, and B, the customers have just told us it's okay. Some of these things are okay, and and you don't have to have it baked out a thousand percent. But we do need to make sure that we have it available in the restaurant, delivered in a way that is safe, and 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 making sure that it, it meets their taste requirements. And which our chefs that we have, I'm actually sitting in the chef kitchen right now, but our chefs will work on and do. But every product doesn't have to be. Tested. And Elizabeth, as you've developed this relationship with your customers, I think it's really interesting too that you're sometimes okay with disappointing them. We talked a little like th- that dialogue with, hey, we ran out of something. How has that come about at McDonald's from testing to getting everything perfect to this more of a two way dialogue with your customers where there's some give and take? Because I think that is modern marketing. And you're absolutely right. And we always want to make sure, like we measure customer satisfaction within our restaurants. So we always want to make sure that we are delivering on the promise that we gave them. But as we've established this long-term relationship with our, our customers and our fans, there are some things that they have said, we will forgive you for this, but don't make it happen all the time. When we did a collab with Travis Scott and we started running out of product because Travis was so big, they were like, we understand because we're fans of him as well. So it's okay if you may run out of a couple of things. When we did the collab with Artist Residency and it was, oh my God, the name escapes me right now. But we, when we did that first collab and we had the little figurines, again, we started running out and the fans were like, it's okay. It's okay because you've touched something in culture that we enjoy, but you know, next time, make sure you understand our trends or understand what we're looking for. But it's OK if you run out because we understand how popular these items are. And that is modern marketing for us because that wouldn't have happened in the past. McDonald's is always about assured supply or for the years I've been here, it's always been about assured supply, whereas the consumer behavior is changing to where it is more okay to have scarcity, okay to run out on certain things. Now, we're not going to run out of a Big Mac 
or a, a cheeseburger, but there are certain things where they've said, we're going to give you a little bit of permission because we understand that these are premium items and that we're lucky to get some of them. So we've taken a little bit of risk in that. So Elizabeth, the fact you've been in McDonald's and you've lived through the digital transformation of this company, McDonald's with its app, with its uh, uh, the way you can order, the connection with Uber Eats you talked about, um, the company I think of is incredibly progressive digitally for their customers. How did that happen? And, and how did it happen for marketing? At what point did, it, did the change happen where you went from the way you had been to embracing digital transformation? Oh, wow. I would say... It started with our fans and our customers. You will always see different trends and changes within the industry. But what we started to notice was that customers were asking for McDonald's to be more accessible. They were asking for an easier way to engage McDonald's. Within the restaurants, they were asking for easier ways to prepare the food and to make sure it was done on time and things of that nature. So we knew in order to be in front of the digital transformation, we had to adjust things. We had to adjust the way that our restaurants, we operated within our restaurants, which is you look at some of the kiosks that are there. But then we had to adjust the way that we actually engage with our fans. That was a way that they were demanding. So when you go into a restaurant, some people were saying, I want to walk up to the counter and have that one-on-one interaction, you know, with Liz who may be, you know, taking my order. I have all the time in the world. And there were other customers who were like, no, I don't want to do that. I am in a rush. I just want to hit it on my phone, have my order ready to go. And I know from accuracy, I can control it, you know, because of what I'm putting in there. And so we had to make that transition based upon our customers' needs and our customer demands that we get better as a brand. And because we were so big, and as you mentioned, almost 40,000 restaurants globally, we also had to do it from the perspective of how do we do this in a way that we could do it at scale? And how do we do this in a way that was in front of the industry because customers were expecting more from us as a brand? And so to be honest with you, I cannot even remember the date that we actually started to do it or anything of that nature. It has just become second nature. Now, I do remember the time where we used to leave voicemails for people about major product news on a real phone, landline phone. No longer do we do that, but yes. You've moved with the times. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. So, uh, Elizabeth, I'd like to ask all our guests three cheers, three things that you're looking forward to right now in the near future, personal or professional. What are you excited about? I am excited about, also one thing I'm excited about from McDonald's, as we are looking at continuing to transform within the industry, I feel like we are at a moment where we're not going to stop. McDonald's started um, with entrepreneurs who are in the brand, running the brand and running restaurants. And there is a a griminess or grit in terms of what entrepreneurs have. And I feel like that is back with us in terms of we are not going to stop. And we're always going to continue to figure out how we can transform based upon how our customers are looking for us to show up. So that's one. Whether it's internal, whether it's external in terms of the way we engage consumers, I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about how we're going to continue to bring initiatives or products forward, which I can't tell you about, that come from what customers are saying that they want from us. So it's internal brand transformation, and it's external in terms of products and different things that customers have said, I want this from you, and we're getting ready to make sure that we continue to bring them forward. And then the third thing is not a McDonald's thing. What I am excited about, and I actually saw this trend when I was leading our multicultural team, is that there is this power and voice of women across all of the diversity groups that is just bubbling up and it is just coming loud. Latina women, when you look at African-American women, Asian women, and I am excited to see how that voice is going to continue to grow and continue to shape what is going on in the industry, whether it's marketing, whether it's the world, whatever it is, there is just something right now that is happening and it's been happening in little parts, but now it's like it's unleashed, unconstrained, and I'm excited about that. Bethany, any other questions? No, Elizabeth, you're amazing. Thank you, Elizabeth. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. A huge thank you to my guest this week, Elizabeth Campbell, and as always, my colleague, Bethany Poole. If you like this episode, please subscribe to get the latest updates and the next recording as soon as it's ready. We'll see you next time for Modern Marketers by Think With Google.
Thank you for listening to Modern Marketers by Think with Google. Our host is Joshua Spanier. Modern Marketers is brought to you by Google and Attention. The podcast is produced by the Google Ads marketing team and Frankie Guadagnino, Tiffer Bauscher, and Emily Behrens for Attention. Our technical producer is Kevin Fisher. Modern Marketers is edited by Sean Colello, and this podcast is mixed and mastered by Andy Inglot. Our theme music is by Jerry Matei. Thanks for listening.